All right, if you own a mega ginormous RV like one of the ones featured here, you'll find there's no shortage of videos on YouTube on how to outfit your uh, gargantuan <laughs> camper with a complete solar system. But what if you have a smaller RV trailer like we do and you just want to take it for a weekend camping trip like two or three nights? Well, I've got the solution and you don't have to spend big bucks on it like somebody would on one of these monsters. Here's a view of our quite modest 17-foot RV trailer. It's all we need. We're a family of four, and it's big enough for our weekend getaways. And here's the battery we use, the deep cycle battery that we use for those weekend getaways. It's plenty of power for what we need. Let's go inside and take a quick little tour. You can see we've got a radio there. Fair amount of lights. There's the light over the little gathering table. There's the AC unit. There's another light. Uh, we also have a microwave, which you would never use unless you're connected to shore power. There's the vent over the oven. Moving outside, um, you can see how modest our trailer is once again. But I wanted to show this. <laughs> when we bought this trailer used, this is what it came with. It came with a car starting battery, of all things. And you can see it's just ridiculously corroded. I mean, it, it's it's horrible. But, hey, we got the trailer for pretty cheap, so... If, if that's what you're going to give us, hey, we'll take it. So what I needed to do was remove this bad boy. And by the way, I, I made sure to wear gloves before touching it. Always do that when you're touching an old battery. And you can see, all you got to do is look at the label. You can see it's, it's a starting battery, which that's not what you want to use in an RV, obviously. You want to use what's called a deep cycle battery. Those of you who know RVs already know this. Some of you probably don't, though. If you see cold cranking amps on the top of the battery like that, you've got the wrong battery in your RV. So I removed the battery. I also snipped the connections, the connectors to the battery. They were pretty corroded as well. I'm trying to show you how I was able to snip it while holding the can camera at the same time. Not easy. But anyways, I got rid of those connections and just tossed them. And I cleaned out the battery box that that battery was in. And I removed insulation from the ends of these cables and installed new connectors. Look at that corroded, ugly thing. Horrible. Into the trash pile with you. All right, anyways, I now have our deep cycle battery. And actually, we've had this for a while. We've used this on a number of camping trips. And those connectors that I removed, I replaced with these alligator clips. You can see it's a little rusty there because we have been using our battery and cable clips, like I said, on a number of trips. So you can go by what I'm saying based on personal experience. We've had this battery for, I don't know, four or five camping trips, two night, three night weekend trips, and it's been more than sufficient. Let's head back inside. I'll give you a little demo. Flip on a couple of lights. This light's in the center of the trailer. This light's over the table right here. And basically, my goal was to just power lighting and the water pump. Everything else is a luxury. I mean, if we have shore power and we can power things like that microwave, then great. But it's not a necessity if we don't have shore power. This little gadget's pretty cool. It lets me check the battery charge level, and you can see it's it's up there, nearly fully charged, and that's after a weekend of camping. I haven't recharged the battery, and I can flip on the water pump here and get running water, so the battery's enough for lighting and water, and that's all we care about. If you need more than that, I don't know, maybe you need a bigger RV. I've had people ask, well, what about your refrigerator? How do you power that bad boy up? Now, most RV fridges you can power up with propane, or electricity we don't use either we just use it as a what we call a dry food storage or pantry instead i got this higher end uh, cooler it's a super insulated cooler and it keeps our stuff cold through a weekend with ease i'm just going to open it up here and show you how much room it has it it it's all the room we need for our food family of four now, because we're talking about a deep cycle battery and not a car battery, as mentioned earlier, it is rechargeable. I always recharge our battery using a 30 watt Renogy solar panel, which apparently is no longer available, but this 
solar panel, which is 100 watts, is available, and it costs the same as the 30 watt panel I bought many years ago cost. So I think you can get one for under 100 bucks. So as we say goodbye to another Southern California camping weekend, I hope this video helps you in your RV endeavors, your RV solar power endeavors. If it did, please subscribe. I have plenty of other DIY videos here, and thanks for watching. Happy camping!